Hey, welcome on today's episode number nine. We are going to discuss the benefits of GIS internships uh, from the perspective of the intern and also from the employer. Um, a lot of us started out as interns. I know I have myself and I even blogged about that being an intern here at the, uh, at the County of Riverside. And it's one way to get that foot in the door and also as an employer hiring interns has been very beneficial in helping supplement the resources that we need in order to get certain jobs done uh, you'll notice a change look at the background i am here in downtown riverside on top of city hall looking kind of northeasterly over riverside and you can see Mission Inn in the background, and a lot of the different uh, architecture that's uh, really nice uh, to view when you go down Main Street. And uh, it is just a gorgeous day in Riverside, and I'm just like, I gotta get outside. I'm not gonna stay indoors and uh, do this broadcast. Uh, definitely wanna show you what we have to offer here in Riverside. So just to know where you're at, you are watching the GIS Leadership Lunch and Learn event. I am your host, Toby Soto. I am also the blogger behind minigovguy.com. I am also the GIS manager for the city of Riverside. And I am doing these events so that it takes you from good to great with actionable content from my experiences and also from industry leaders that I've talked to that I want to be able to share across to you. Uh, my thoughts and opinions are of my own and not of my employer. So let's get down to what we're discussed today, which is the uh, benefits of GIS internships. So on the intern side, basically you're going to get free training. You know, you're going to come into an organization, they're going to provide you with the software, they're going to provide you how to do a certain process, and uh, you're going to be able to uh, sit with industry experts and they're going to teach you the ins and outs how to work with the GIS software and also in with the business processes and so you're going to gain a lot of experience you're going to gain a lot of skill you're going to learn about the business and that is just immense immense experience that, that you can take uh, to your interview to your next interview or to your next employer and you'll be just that much more valuable um, you'll be able to also learn who the players are who do these people talk to in the agency? Who, who are they getting information from? Who are they learning from? Uh, such as like other GIS analysts or the GIS manager. Who are they talking to? And, and you know, just start picking the brains of other people within the agency. And you're gonna learn a lot more. So for example, if you wanna learn about planning and, and they keep talking to a certain planner or, or someone like that, just find out, you know, interview them. Find out what is it that they do? What is it that they know? And, and just learning that business is just gonna be immensely skillful for you. Um, the other thing too is that as, as an intern, you're also trying out the employer. You know, is this a, a place that you wanna be? Is this a place where you wanna work? You know, it's, it's uh, there's no skin off your back to do it. You're able to, to test drive the employer may realize you don't like it you may want to go somewhere else take your experience and then head somewhere you know head to another employer or you like it so much that you know hopefully a, a full-time position opens up and you'd be right in line uh, to take that position also as an intern your your uh, schedule is very flexible obviously we all work with your school schedule and your work schedules because Sometimes you may have a, another job other than the internship, but it is very flexible. Sometimes I've had uh, students work, you know, a couple hours a day or maybe uh, uh, one day a week, you know, something. But we've been always very flexible. And we don't put you on projects that have like major deadlines where, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on you. We wouldn't want to do that to you. Uh, also, how would you want to find these internships? Obviously, employers will advertise them find them online either on their websites themselves or if you go to meetups you know, GIS meetups a lot of employers are there uh, looking for interns and so you just want to go there and start networking and find out who's who's looking for to hire people for internships um, also governmentjobs.com 
or it's a .org, I can't remember which one it is. But that as well, uh, we'll post a lot of uh, internships and you can uh, apply online. And then just asking around, you know, finding other GIS professionals, networking, you know, finding out what's out there, they will provide you, they will, they will direct you to uh, where you need to go in order to apply for internships. So on the employer side, uh, definitely no cost. No cost, low cost uh, resources uh, to help you with your GIS program. Uh, that's been, I know in my instance, uh, money has always been an issue, so we've always had to help supplement our resources by having interns and uh, put them on some of those uh, tasks that are a little more mundane, that's a little more repetitive, uh, that kind of frees up our, our specialists and our analysts to do a little more high level GIS work, but we still got to get some of that day-to-day -day stuff done, and so hiring interns has definitely helped in, in that regard. Um, you can also have, a, uh, as an intern, as dedicated support to a specific task. Uh, that, you, know, you can either have them float around on other projects, but you know it's kind of nice to have them dedicated to uh, one project or one task so that they kind of go from start to finish. And most uh, internships with their schools, they want to see that they've completed um, a start and a finish and have some sort of product or some sort of uh, uh, presentation to show what they have learned and what they have accomplished uh, through the time frame. The other thing is uh, a lot of some interns, depending on their skill level, uh, you can have them do R&D. Uh, for example, uh, there was a hackathon here locally in Riverside a couple years ago and the winner of that hackathon we actually ended up hiring as an intern and she did some R&D and she was actually able to do to um, um, really uh, elevate our, our website on uh, some of the things that she was doing with uh, JavaScripting and Python and things like that so uh, depending on that skill level of resource that you acquire can you know push them into maybe an R&D role. Uh, the other thing too is you get fresh ideas. You know, these interns, you know, they're young. Uh, they're coming in, uh, looking at the world in a different view. And so you can get this fresh idea on how they would access information or or what uh, applications they may use to help uh, be a little more efficient in the, in their day to day use. Um, they also have a, a limited time frame. So um, usually it's like a three month time frame or, or whatever the class schedule is. Maybe it's a four month time frame you'll get them for. Uh, sometimes you'll get them for a whole year, depending on uh, if it's a university and they're going through a master's program, you could have them for a whole year. So you know, plan out your projects, plan out your needs based on uh, how much time uh, the students are available to give. Uh, the other last thing about this too is that, you know, as an employer, you're also kind of test driving the employee as an intern to see, hey, you know what, maybe this could be a future employee uh, for the company or for the agency. Uh, I've tested a few uh, interns that have just been rock stars, and you know, we don't want to lose them, and so, you know, shifting monies around and things like that, we're able to actually hire a couple of those interns and it's been very beneficial in the long run. Um, how do you find interns? Obviously uh, the local colleges, the junior colleges, universities, um, some of them may have GIS programs there and you can put a, a flyer or uh, some sort of uh, notification with the, um, with the school system stating that you're looking for interns for a specific amount of time. Uh, the other thing is uh, in high schools and also in trade schools. Don't forget those as well. Uh, they have GIS programs that are really starting out at an early level, and they're just as capable to do interns as well. Uh, yeah, a lot of those kids are really, really smart. So, anyways, uh, I hope that's been beneficial to you. I, you know, I hope this has kind of motivated you to either apply for an internship or hire interns because they are a great resource, and definitely in supplementing uh, the resources that you need to keep your GIS maintained and up and going. Uh, so that's this is it for this week's edition of GIS Leadership Lunch and Learn event. Um, you know, leave a comment and, and share your experience, whether you have been an intern or you have hired interns. I'd love to hear what your experiences are uh, with this uh, internship. 
And if you're enjoying these videos, please share them or subscribe. I really appreciate that. Uh, viewership has been going up and I've been getting a lot of great feedback and uh, from a lot of you that really enjoy these videos. So uh, definitely share it and, and please comment. It just helps uh, boost the ratings. And for more information on GIS Leadership Lunch and Learn, you can always go to minigovguide.com. And on every Wednesday, 1230, I try to be here as much as I can uh, to perform these uh, Facebook Live events. This isn't my full-time job. My full-time job takes priority, so sometimes I miss those Wednesdays, but I try to notify you guys on Facebook when that's going to happen. So anyways, have a great day. It's a beautiful day. Get out there and knock it out.